This teleproduction, a current assessment of the nuclear accident at Chernobyl, was produced in the Directorate of Intelligence. An official announcement from Unless the viewers Council of Moscow Television were watching the 9 p.m. news closely on Monday, April 28, they would have missed the brief and buried report of the biggest nuclear accident in history, an accident that had occurred at least two days earlier at Chernobyl in the Ukraine. Until this happened, the Soviets had pointed with pride to the growth and safety standards of their 32-year-old nuclear industry. Having begun operations in 1977, the Chernobyl nuclear complex is one of the largest plants in the Soviet Union and Europe, with four 1,000 megawatt reactors operational and a fifth under construction. Chernobyl's importance is underscored by the fact that the Ukraine generates about one-fifth of all the power in the Soviet Union. The nearby city of Pripyat has owed its existence to construction of the big nuclear facility. In just 15 years, Pripyat became an atomic company town with a population of 46,000. Both it and Chernobyl city, southeast of the complex, are located on the Pripyat River, which flows into the Dnieper, helping form the Kiev watershed, some 70 kilometers south of the reactor site. The reservoir supplies the bulk of the drinking water for the two and a half million residents of Kiev, the ancient capital of the Ukraine, which lies about 130 kilometers southeast of the site. Agriculture in the region is diverse, and there is a large forested area. Prior to the accident, the Soviets were claiming that the design of the Chernobyl reactors incorporated elements that would ensure radiation safety both during normal operations and under abnormal conditions. Despite Moscow's safety claims, it was in one of the newer second generation reactors, number four, that the explosion occurred. Our best estimate is that the accident followed a loss of power and the failure of the emergency diesel generators to start. Without power, the cooling systems could not work and the fuel began to overheat. The excessive temperature caused a reaction between steam, fuel, and graphite producing hydrogen. The hydrogen built up until there was an explosion which destroyed the reactor hall roof. It's still not certain how much time elapsed between the explosion and the radioactive release. The explosion set fire to the exposed graphite in the reactor core, further spreading radioactive materials. As of May 12, there still was no evidence of damage to the adjacent number three reactor. If the accident developed according to the scenario just outlined, the Soviets probably would have had several hours to begin evacuating plant personnel. They reported, however, that evacuation of the town of Pripyat did not get underway until 36 hours after the start of the accident. Normally, about 200 workers operate the reactor station. While we have no hard figures on the number of casualties, the Soviet initial claims, two persons killed and 197 hospitalized, seem low. They are plausible, assuming there was time to evacuate most personnel before the explosion. Preliminary estimates suggest that the people at the site itself, or as many as 200, could have received lethal doses of radiation. Deaths from such radiation sickness begin to occur several days to weeks after exposure. A U.S. bone marrow transplant expert is in the USSR at the invitation of the Soviets. He has already started surgery, indicating there are victims who received potentially lethal doses. Another 500 to 1,000 people, as far as five kilometers away from the site, but exposed to the resulting radioactive plume, could have received substantial doses. Within a radius of 30 kilometers, some of the estimated 25 to 35,000 residents who were exposed may have received enough radiation to show mild symptoms such as nausea. These people will be risks for future cancers. Outside the 30 kilometer range from the site, there could have been higher than normal cases of radiation, but such doses probably will not pose significant health risks.
There are some 60 medium and small sized civilian industrial plants which lie within the 30 kilometer radius of the Chernobyl reactor and where in several instances production has been halted. The authorities appear to have moved fast to cordon off the immediately affected towns of Chernobyl and Pripyat, but evacuation did not occur immediately. Soviet television later reported 1,100 buses used in the evacuation of Pripyat. And in Chernobyl city, hundreds more buses and trucks took part in the evacuation, which by May 7 appeared complete. There could be political fallout from the accident, with one or more high-level officials being made scapegoats. Vladimir Dolgich, the party secretary in charge of energy since the early 1970s, is one of two Brezhnev holdovers still on the secretariat. The accident could provide Gorbachev with a pretext to replace Dolgich. And Ukrainian party chief Vladimir Sherbitsky could be vulnerable for mishandling aspects of the recovery effort, such as organizing medical care and managing the evacuation. Gorbachev is widely suspected of wanting to remove Sherbitsky. As to the question of what did the Soviets know about the disaster and when did they know it, we believe that things began to go wrong on April 25th. Soviet claims that the accident occurred at 1.23 a.m. Saturday, April 26, probably refer to the explosion that destroyed the reactor. The Chernobyl plant is located just north of the Kiev Reservoir. Some radiation has undoubtedly been carried to the reservoir by winds and the Dnieper and Pripyat rivers that feed it. Radiation levels in the water were expected to rise over the ensuing weeks. Thus far, direct contamination of farmland probably has been minimal. Dairy products would be most at risk because of the presence of radioactive iodine, which, when ingested, attacks the thyroid, particularly among children. However, the initial plume of radioactivity appears to have passed over an area largely covered by forest. Considerable controversy has followed in the plume's wake, even among some of the Soviet's Eastern Bloc clients where precautionary steps were taken. By week's end, in addition to the ever-expanding plume, high altitude winds were carrying particles of reduced radioactivity across the polar regions into the Western Hemisphere and Far East. The Soviet safety goals for nuclear power have been hard to determine as they have evolved over the past 15 years. The emphasis seems to have been on ensuring reliable cooling of the reactor core under accident conditions. The hydrogen explosion problem, which would be a major challenge to their reactor safety system, does not appear to have been adequately addressed. By almost any indicator, Chernobyl is the worst nuclear accident in history. In the two weeks since the accident, the Soviets claimed to have evacuated the population within 30 kilometers, contained the damage at the site, and begun decontamination of the area. Efforts to contain the spread of fire and radiation included using helicopters to drop materials into the core of the reactor. In summary, as of Monday, May 12, there are preliminary calculations suggesting that as many as 200 people the normal complement operating the Chernobyl nuclear reactor station could have been exposed to lethal doses of radiation. Another 500 to 1,000 people exposed to the plume as far as five kilometers away could have received substantial doses. Contamination of farmland in the area of the accident probably has been minimal, with not more than 15 to 25 percent of pasture land in the Chernobyl region seriously affected. It will be some time, however, before the full economic impact is clear. Given the near certainty of contaminated food and water supplies in the area, we don't expect the inhabitants to start returning for several weeks at the earliest. As to the future of the Chernobyl facility, the older units, one and two, could be brought online as soon as the site is safe to work in, which depends on control of emissions from the complex and the concentration and pattern of fallout. The Soviet authorities won't be able to start up Unit 3, which shares the reactor building with the demolished Unit 4, 
until the big reconstruction and cleanup job has been completed. The entire effort could take years. <laughs>